Hi, my name is Susan Vissel. I'm uh, speaking with you from New York, where we are establishing a new global partnership to end violence against children. Uh, and interestingly enough, yesterday there was um, a senior government official from Peru uh, here for the Commission on the Status of Women who has expressed some interest in Peru getting more involved in the global partnership. And this is relevant, um, uh, of course, to all of your work uh, at various levels of engagement in any country um, to address violence, to prevent and respond to violence in childhood. Violence against children has made it into this new agenda. You'll see on the slide, Agenda 2030 and Ending Violence Against Children. The 17 goals of this new agenda, at least four of those goals uh, ex explicitly address the safety and security of children no matter where they are. And I'll come back to the various settings in which children experience violence in a moment. And most importantly, what I am going to address uh, in, in the coming moments is, is action and how we take action uh, in the various aspects of society in which we interact with children. So on the third slide, uh, it's a much more clear articulation of the targets within those four goals of Agenda 2030. Uh, and likewise, on the following slide, where it says, reduce the impact of violence in families, communities, and all settings, and ensuring fair, effective uh, institutions and access to justice. And normally, when I talk about violence against children and Agenda 2030, I say something like this. The agenda calls for ending violence, exploitation, abuse, neglect, trafficking, torture, female genital mutilation and cutting, child marriage, and child labor. So we have for the first time really in the history of the rights of children and of human rights more broadly, a very clear commitment to making sure our children all over the world feel very safe. Moving on to the next slide, and the title is What is End Violence? This is the partnership. It's a platform to strengthen action to bring all parties, NGOs, civil society, foundations, governments, the UN, academics and researchers, and young people themselves to take action to prevent and respond to violence. And importantly, often when I refer to NGOs and civil society, I explicitly make a mention of community-based groups that are very, very local and indigenous, as well as groups that capture the assets and the power of the faith-based community. So we move to the slide titled Strategy, and the one that follows it really lays out this new architecture and framework to bring together countries all over the world and these multiple groups to do a number of things. And you'll see a very ambitious vision and mission for the End Violence Partnership. The partnership is driven by a number of drivers as well as some principles within which you will see child rights as a major one. The partnership has three ambitious goals. The first is to build and sustain political will at all levels. The second goal is to accelerate action. And this acceleration of action importantly takes place in families, in schools, in communities, in the places that children occupy on a day-to-day -day basis. The third goal of the partnership is to strengthen collaboration. As I've said already, that is collaboration among different actors who have a role in the lives of children. But it's also collaboration across borders, so maybe among and between municipalities or across national borders when we think of things like the safety and security of children who are escaping conflict and crisis. So it's extremely important that this platform finds a way to connect actors to connect countries. The next slide to shows two versions of the strategy and this is important because we have developed a child and youth friendly version of the strategy. And these documents are incidentally available in Spanish. Um, they have not been translated necessarily into indigenous languages anywhere in the world. 
but there is a child and youth friendly version and it's something that we encourage um, community groups um, and others interacting with children in, in a particular country um, to get familiar with and to seek children's active involvement uh, in, this, in this partnership. Turning to the next slide, just to dwell for a moment on goal one, building political will. Political will means many things. It means that our leaders um, at the international level, at the UN, uh, in the Human Rights Council, in the Committee on the Rights of the Child, uh, in other places, are actively and, and aggressively implementing the SDGs that relate to children and their safety and security. Political will also means garnering, sustaining, generating, accelerating the engagement of our leaders of our countries, uh, including in Peru. You want to have your various, um, your head of state, but equally important, your ministers from health, from education, from social welfare, from justice, from finance and from planning to engage in implementation of Agenda 2030 and in really doing things that improve the lives of children as relates to the violence that they experience. Turning to the next slide where we talk about goal two and the acceleration of action. This is the piece that's most important for civil society actors, for community groups, for local municipalities, there is a package of evidence-based strategies that lie at the center of all of our efforts now collectively around the world to keep children safe. And so the acceleration of action is really meant to inform programming with evidence, to put in place monitoring and evaluation frameworks, even at the local level, to know that over time the things we're doing to keep children safe are actually working. And one of my aspirations in this partnership is to know that throughout the life of the SDGs, so between now and 2030, we're all making a real difference in the lives of children from their perspective. So we would like to know in five years that children, because of all of our efforts in Peru and in countries all over the world, that children themselves feel safer and more secure. Turning to the next slide, strengthening collaboration, the third goal of the partnership. As I've said, it's important that all stakeholders, from government to the UN to civil society, leaders of the faith-based community, foundations, academics and researchers, come together at a country, at a subnational level, and come together internationally to focus on what's working, to share good practices, and to highlight where there are challenges in the event that there are shared solutions. Now the next slide, INSPIRE, seven strategies for ending violence against children. This is, as I mentioned, at the heart of the global partnership to end violence against children. And the INSPIRE strategies have been pulled together by WHO, the Centers for Disease Control, UNICEF, the Global Partnership, and other partners. And why did we pull these strategies together, it is because they are evidence-based, because they have been proven to be effective. And each of the letters in INSPIRE stands for one of the strategies. And just to go through them one by one, and I think for those of you that are watching this uh, and are practitioners, you'll see relevance. Many of these strategies are things that you are already doing. So to accelerate action, to end violence against children, it will be important to scale up each of these strategies to determine with your finance and planning partners how much they cost, to put them in place, and to put a monitoring and evaluation framework together. Now, you'll see here the strategies range from implementation and enforcement of laws to norms and values, safe environments for children, parent and caregiver support, income and economic strengthening. I'm looking here a little bit to my list. Uh, response and support services and education and life skills. There's nothing surprising in here except for the fact that we are advocating for scaled up implementation and for measurement of ongoing effectiveness. Just before we turn to country engagement, I want to talk a little bit about the strategies that really uh, need community and local engagement 
in new and in different ways. And the first of those is support to family and caregivers. We know that putting in place support mechanisms, in particular for single parent households, but also for households where perhaps a grandmother is providing care um, or where there is a stress already in the household, that just by, say, in early childhood, a family nurse visiting program that is in place can help to reduce levels of violence and stress in a household. 